A traditional Mandinga wedding in Tambacunda. Her head covered, the bride is readied for the transition to a new life in marriage. 17-year-old Jalima Sise is also ready for marriage. Like many Senegalese women, Jalima was prepared during a frightening ceremony when she was just a child. They forced me to do it. They forced me. It really hurt. Jalima's pain came from having her clitoris removed when she was only seven years old during a traditional cutting ceremony. It's called female genital mutilation or cutting, FGMC, and was banned throughout Senegal in 1999. But more than a decade later, young girls are still being cut, according to tribal tradition and custom. Jalima's story shows how hard it will be for this practice to truly disappear. <laughs> Jalima's nightmare began when she and her parents drove from the capital Dakar to a region in southeast Senegal, Tambacunda, to spend summer vacation with her grandmother. We came here for the holidays with my father and mother. We came for a cultural festival. When the celebration ended, my parents returned home and left me here with my grandparents. But then something happened that Chalima didn't expect. They showed me to the bedroom and beckoned that I enter. They were planning this for a long time. It was when they laid me on the bed and cut me that I felt it and cried. I cried and I called out to my grandmother, but she didn't respond. In fact, it was Kani Choban, Jalima's paternal grandmother, who had organized her cutting following the custom of her tribe. After making the first cut herself, she handed the blade over for another girl to be cut. It wasn't clean because there was just one blade for many girls. Not one blade for one girl, only one blade for many girls. Afterwards, my aunt decided to bring me back home to my parents. When she brought me back, she told my parents. This angered my father. Jalima's father, Madhu Sise, had forbidden his mother to cut Jalima. My opinion is clear. I never liked excisions. But his mother betrayed his wishes. This goes back in time. If it hadn't been the practice, I wouldn't have done it. I found it here. That's why I did it. Jalima's grandmother is a devout Muslim. She is also a staunch believer of traditional customs. Every day she goes to pray at a nearby mosque. But for Jalima's mother, Dora Jang, her belief is quite different. She belongs to the Wolof ethnic group, a group that doesn't practice excisions. Dora was furious when she heard Jalima was cut. No one asked me. It had really hurt me. Tradition is a big driver of FGMC in Senegal. The many ethnic groups in this diverse country differ in their attitude and practice toward it. According to the Mandingas, Jalima's father's tribe, it's a sign of purity. When you're not cut, they say you're not clean. Even if you pray, God will not accept your prayer. Even if you offer food, you are cursed. And it's wrong. Madhu has become an activist, joining a growing movement of men and women determined to end FGMC. He says change must come from the grassroots. People are beginning to understand the disastrous consequences of excisions. 
health consequences like infections and difficulties giving birth. But people are also beginning to recognize that their rights have been compromised by tradition. Placards in hand, these women and girls, men and boys make what they call a public declaration for the abandonment of the practice, demanding it should be halted. Getting the support of men is crucial. Men need to accept women without excisions. I have some friends. Sometimes I advise them not to do it. We won the elimination of excisions. It is a criminal act. You get more pleasure with a woman who hasn't been cut. I can't agree that a woman should be cut. But in some parts of Senegal, the movement has a long way to go. Senegal is a country of 14 regions, 10 of which continue to practice cutting. One of the most fervent pro-cutting strongholds is Matam province, home of the Pilar people. They listen to their local imam. According to my own understanding of Islam, it doesn't reject it. It's a good thing in that it honors women. Forbidding it completely is not acceptable to Islam. But the imam's view is disputed by the government. Unde Suke Gay is director of family at the Ministry of Family and Child Protection. We realized that cutting is not recommended by the Quran or the Bible. And that's when we formed partnerships and made a decision about the law. The government is now reaching out, community by community, to change more minds about the practice. It's a partnership with the UN Population Fund, UNICEF, and local groups like Tostan. Where there have been public declarations against the practice, as many as 65 percent change their minds. We organize young people from families practicing cutting to set up a monitoring and alert system to try to help the community to denounce the practice of excisions. And this is working very well. The system recently produced this alert. In the time, a group working with women and young people reported the case of two girls who were cut and died. It's incidents like these that convinced Kani Choban to change. I did it because it was part of the culture. Now everybody is giving it up. That's why I gave it up too. I have some grandchildren who are not cut. Jalima is attending school in Tambacunda, the same village where her grandmother lives. She appears well adjusted in spite of what she endured. I believe they took something from me. I feel different. I don't speak about it with my friends because I'm ashamed. But when Jalima gets married and has daughters, she promises to spare them from her own painful and humiliating ordeal. One day when I have a daughter, I will not let anyone touch her.